Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to watch our channel. Today's video is all about this building and the barn that we've been using for the last year for the sheep. We put it up, this is the very first video on our YouTube channel, but it doesn't have any description and we get a lot of questions. So now that we've been in this building for a whole year, there's things that we've learned, things that we like and don't like, and we're gonna kind of tell you all about the building, all the specs and everything, what it costs. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Levi in a second and he's gonna tell you all the technical stuff. But um, some things to note, we're gonna try to do a set schedule for videos in 2021. Every Monday and every other Friday, we're gonna do our very best to put a video out. Um, they'll be out at 12.30 p.m. those Mondays and Fridays and some of them will have blog posts to go with them on the website and some of them won't. So um, we hope you like them. We get a lot of questions about it. A lot of people ask questions about it. So we just thought we'd give you some details. Uh, and one of the reasons we put the video up about this and kind of why we're doing this again is because there is no set of plans for this building. Meaning like we didn't really, I, I, I searched forever about what we did in hopes that somebody had done something out there on the internet for it and I couldn't find anything so uh, we just kind of wung it so we're going to show you a little bit about what we did to wing it what we like about it what we don't like about it and uh, uh, if I were you what I would do different <laughs> if you want to do something like this alright so uh, talk a little bit about what we did I guess in the beginning this actually uh, was not designed to be a barn. This was a high tunnel. Um, we had it for growing veggies. Uh, we had it for a short amount of time and uh, <clears throat> the wind took our plastic off of it. And when it did so, we kind of had decided we were going to transition out of veggies uh, and into sheep more so and we needed a structure for those sheep <clears throat> so that's kind of what we did we had this high tunnel and uh, we converted it to a barn you what we'll do it again okay okay see ya toodles <laughs> here in the beginning was a uh, 24 by 96 uh, to 24 feet by 96 feet high tunnel and uh, when the wind came and took the plastic off of the high tunnel it did uh, do a number on one of the trusses so what I did is I just took one of the trusses out of it um, trusses are six feet apart and, um, so now our structure is 24 foot wide 90 feet long that's what we're looking at here this is uh when i say trusses this is our trusses okay i think it's inch and a quarter pipe uh i don't know the gauge of the wall but it's a standard high tunnel so we'll say that so if you look up a standard high tunnel it's probably whatever that is but um it is uh the i think they call it the gothic style arch is the arch on the high tunnel so it's not the rounded arch um so but this pipe comes down and it goes down into the ground here and that's when you buy a high tunnel this is all you get uh, you get the posts that go down in the ground and then they bolt in and you got the trusses on top okay <clears throat> so that is what you get for the high tunnel um, because we had the issues with the wind we decided we wanted to beef this thing up a, a bit uh, so what we did to beef it up uh, we came down both sides of the building uh, we took uh, some material we had around some of its old guardrail posts that were pulled and uh, so they're pressure uh, pressure treated guardrail posts um, and then the, the rest of it was old telephone poles we had laying around we cut those uh, I set them down in the ground uh, about three feet into the ground uh, left about four foot stick up and uh, we set those every 12 feet in between the trusses so every 12 feet we have one of these poles and then along with that we came down and we built a wall on those poles the wall stands four feet tall on both sides of the building uh, we just built the wall 
Uh, we put made it out of a pressure treated 2x8 on the bottom and 2x4s uh, on top. And, and uh, then it's just regular metal on top of that. So that's what we built on, uh, that's what we built with to kind of sturdy it up. Okay, the other thing we wanted to do is beef up the ends a little bit. Uh, so what I did was I came in, uh, what did I come in? Like six foot on each side of the building. And I set a uh, four by six treated post. And this treated post, uh, again, goes a couple feet down in the ground and then goes all the way up. And I drilled holes through the, the end trusses and I lagged. Uh, I just use a quarter inch lag, five inches long, to uh, lag those trusses into these poles here. So we did that, we built walls on the ends, uh, and then uh, the height of the building that we were looking at, since I didn't say that earlier, uh, to the peak of the building, we are 12 foot. Uh, to the bottom of our trusses uh, and my doorway, I, we're like nine foot eight inches, so. Uh, so that's what we have there. Uh, I left an opening, uh, something like, so it's nine, eight tall, and uh, it's like 11 foot wide. So out here, what we did, uh, on the sides, on the top of the walls, uh, we came through and we ripped two by fours in half. Uh, ripped them on a table saw, so we had two by two pieces. We laid those along the top just to kind of give it a smooth edge so that it wasn't against the tin to rip this plastic. I don't know if you have to do that. That's just what we did. Uh, so, and then these come down. There's a piece of the same pipe that goes through a pocket that was sewed into here. Uh, pipe goes through and then we just took, uh, it comes with one inch strapping. Uh, you tie it to the pipe and then the, it's just like a ratchet strap handle right there. And that uh, is lagged in. And these are every eight feet apart on the building. <laughs> yeah, on the building. <laughs> they are every eight feet apart on the building. And, uh, and we tried to do our best so like every other one of them hits one of those poles in there. So we kind of cheated them a little bit so that uh, every other strap is sunk into one of those poles. Whoa, that's a good way to put a hole in it. So a uh, little bit about what we do and do not like about this. Uh, there's always things you do like and always things you don't like. So what we don't uh, like about this uh, building is the moisture. That's probably the biggest thing. Uh, it has a tendency to hold a lot of moisture in. It's not very well ventilated. Uh, this tarp does not let any air flow through it. That's for sure. So 
Uh, so it has a tendency to when it goes from uh, freezing to thawing. So in the winter time when we're below freezing and we are and uh, go above freezing during the day, it, it will sweat in here. Um, and it will actually condensate and it'll rain in here. So I do not like that part. Uh, if we keep both ends open, there are doors on the other end that we can close. <clears throat> but if we keep both ends open, it does a lot better. Uh, lets the air flow through a lot better and it won't sweat as bad, but it still does sweat. So uh, as far as that goes, holding heat uh, or holding no moisture in, I don't like that. Um, the other uh, big thing that we do not like about this uh, is how hard it is to ventilate. We thought it would just be a matter of putting some fans up to kind of keep air moving through the winter or through the summertime to try to keep it cooled off in here and uh, <clears throat> that was not the case. We hung fans in the rafters trying to vent it. Really needed more power. Uh, so uh, it's doable. You can put fans in there but it's pricey to get it to vent correctly. Uh, the other thing we don't like about it because uh, of the moisture situation and us trying to keep air flowing through here all the time it also is cold in here so with the U's, it's okay uh, they can handle the cold that kind of stuff it still breaks the wind that enough that they got a place to stay out of the shelter that kind of thing so for the U's, it's fine but come lambing time uh, this is not a good place to lamb in the winter time uh, because of all the moisture and trying to keep it warm in here and that type of thing <clears throat> so we don't like that about the building uh, Probably our number one thing we love about this building is the light. I mean, when you're out here, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, even if it's a cloudy day, uh, it is just, it's daylight in here. You know, it's if it's light outside, it's light in here. So there's no uh, lights on in this building or anything like that. Matter of fact, we rarely use the lights that are in this building uh, just because it's always so daylight in here. And so, you know that may not seem like that's that big a deal but when we're working sheep in this building man that is nice because it's not like you know when you're working a sheep you got them in an alleyway or down in a chute or something like that and you need to do something with them you know you block the light in a regular barn it's dark down there it might be hard to see but in here you can see what you're doing along with the light and and uh, moving through the chutes and stuff like that. The sheep don't see their shadows, so they move really nicely in here. Uh, and that, so that's nice. Uh, another thing I wish we would have done, I didn't find this out until later, uh, but when, uh, when we, before we put this tarp on, the one thing I wish I would have done is I wish I would have taken rope I saw this somewhere else suggested where you would take rope and tie it like right up here uh, and then cross it over two trusses. So I like I would come over here, up over the top and tie it again. And then I would make an X with that rope. But what that would do is that was this space, the six foot space in between the trusses, that would alleviate some of that uh, kind of sagging a little bit. It does have a tendency to sag just a little bit in there. Really, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, I fear that it's gonna be a big deal come uh, 15 years down the road, and that's where the tarp is gonna tear. But um, it's really not that big a deal right now, but that's something I would've done. The other thing I would've done different is I probably would've put rope right down the peak of it, kind of to do the same thing, uh, to just kind of take some of that pressure off of the tarp and kind of spread it out a little bit. Future plans for the building. Uh, we, we didn't, when we built this, we didn't really intend for it to always be a sheep barn. We needed temporary sheep uh, barn. And so that's what we have here now. Um, and that's what we're using it for right now. We do have intentions of putting a barn up for animal use in the near future that would be more desirable for animal use. Uh, so that is our intentions with this for the long run. Once we do that, this barn will become primarily hay and equipment storage. And so when it comes to that, it's gonna be perfect for that because it's big, it's wide open, uh, it's got plenty of space. 
and uh, most of those things we talked about as being issues aren't going to matter that much how much does this building cost okay uh, well I guess I'll start from the beginning we bought the high tunnel used so and it didn't have any plastic with it so but it came with most everything else uh, even the wood on the sides and th stuff like that that was all with it so when we bought the high tunnel used I think we paid like 800 bucks for the used frames and everything that goes with it uh, we put it up ourselves I didn't hire anybody to do that so I didn't factor in labor I honestly I don't remember how many hours I had in building the thing now we had a lot of family that helped us and in, in building it it wasn't like we did it ourselves completely because honestly I'm not that skilled and talented but I have a lot of family who is lucky me so uh, they helped us do that we put the structure up uh, as far as uh, the tarp itself I don't remember the exact dollar value I'm thinking we paid 3200 for the tarp is what we paid uh, so we paid $3,200 for the tarp um, and then I think we had 500 bucks in miscellaneous the the metal and extra poles and that kind of stuff that we had a lot of the guardrail posts and stuff is just stuff that we had laying around so <clears throat> and that's what we use so we really have about $4,500 in this building um, is it that great uh, honestly I don't know uh, I can tell you that I probably would not go out and try to find a uh, high tunnel or greenhouse to turn into one a building like this and, and think that's a great deal uh, if you find one that's free or something great like that or some real great deal yeah it's probably a good deal uh, if you can uh, buy if you wanted to buy a new clear span building that would probably be a different story as well but uh, as far as uh, doing it I would probably you know if you're one of those individuals that's like us where you had the greenhouse around or the high tunnel around and you wanted to make that switch that's probably okay I, I, I think it was a worthwhile venture and I'm satisfied in, in that regards but if I were going to try to build a new structure the same size and everything I probably would have just went ahead and built uh, a pole barn thanks for tagging along everybody and, and, and checking this video out uh, as I said in the beginning kind of part of the reasons we wanted to do this video and, and why we started our initial video with uh, actually putting the tarp on which you saw a little bit of that in here uh, is that this no nobody had this out there when we went to start this and maybe there's people that have it out there now I don't know but it was just something we wanted to do to convert a high tunnel to a barn and we wanted to experience it and see what it was and we thought some people would have some information out there but we wanted to throw it out there if you have questions about it don't hesitate to call or don't call us if you do have questions don't hesitate to comment below ask we we'd be happy to help with that or answer anything you know or any questions you might have related to this that's it for today if you guys have questions or comments make sure you put them in the comments below and we'll get them we'll get back to you um and if you guys have ever done anything like this like a diy project on your own farm tell us about it because we're always looking at things and looking for things that we can do to improve and do them kind of ourselves so we'd love to have those ideas. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.